Hi, I'm Jonas from Eclipsource, and today I would like to show you how you can create custom agents in the AI-powered Thea ID. This is a little bit of a spontaneous video. I was just about to create such an agent myself, and I thought, let's record this to show you out there how you can do similar things. So let's dive into it. All right, I'm in my Thea IDE now. Um, and let's explain the use case. So we have talked a lot about coding agents. Today, I would like to show something different. Um, I would like to create an agent that helps me convert blog posts into the right format. Now, what's the background? So we are in our um, website repository here. Um, and as you might know, we very, freak, uh, very often publish blog posts. Um, and we use Hugo for that. So the target format for a blog post looks like this. This is, for example, the blog post for the community release. It has some tags, author tags, um, and then a structured markdown format. Um, so where do these blog posts come from? I write them in Google Doc typically, um, and I can export them from there. But what I get when I export them is not this format, but this format here, which is missing all the meta information. It contains some internal links, um, and the pictures are not properly embedded here. Now, to get from this to the target format is quite some work. Of course, I could probably automate that a little bit with scripts, but you need some intelligence to do that. For example, you want to check whether all these images are in the correct folder. Uh, you want to add the meta uh, tags and so on. So let's create an agent that helps me with that. Um, and just to summarize that, um, so what I have in my workspace now is the export a blog post. So this is the blog post that I want to convert. And I've put all the images into, um, into the same directory so that they can be referred to from the, from the blog post. All right. Now, the first step to automate this is to create a new custom agent. Um, I can do that in the um, AI configuration view. There's an agent tab. Um, and here we see all the built-in agents. And now I can click on add custom agent to create a new one. Now, this dialog allows me to select where the agent definition is stored. Um, I can put it in my user home, um, so it's available on my machine. I can also put it in the workspace directory, in this case, the website directory, and actually commit it to Git so other people would have access to the same um, agent. And because other people might want to use this too, I will select the second option. All right, now this creates a new custom agent definition, um, and we can see uh, here it has been added to my um, workspace, so I could commit it if I wanted to. Um, and now I can give it a name, just like this, blogger, for example, blogger, same as the ID. Um, and now I can already talk to it. So we see it down here. I could select a um, LLM to be used by this agent, and now in my chat, I can talk to blogger. Let's do that. See, all right, this works. Okay, now, of course, this agent um, is very generic at the moment. It just has the uh, default um, system prompt, which is uh, be nice and helpful. Um, now, of course, I need to describe what this agent is supposed to do. And for this, I modify the prompt template. Um, so let me do that. If I click on edit here, prompt template is open and now can on the fly in my IDE start to modify that. Um, and now I would need to describe the workflow that uh, I want the agent to do. Now, um, to be fair, I prepared this because this is the actual work, right? I would need to describe what my expectations from the agent are, um, all the steps that uh, um, the agent is supposed to do. And to not bore you with that, let me copy that in just like this. And now let's quickly see, uh, look at what we added here. All right, so we start the system prompt with a def role definition. You're an agent that helps users to convert existing content into well-formatted blog posts. And then we describe the workflow. So first step in the workflow is transform existing content into blog posts. Um, and now I provide the details. Um, I provide some example blog posts to derive the format form. Um, I tell it, for example, to, uh, that the user is expected to place images in a subdirectory. If any images uh, are missing, ask for clarification. This is hopefully very useful because I often miss images, um, and so on and so forth. Um, I describe uh, the difference between internal links uh, and external links and how images are uh, um, formatted. Now, one uh, interesting thing. 
After the conversion is done, I tell the agent to stop and let the user review the proposal uh, and ask them how to continue. This is important otherwise, because I don't want to build an autonomous agent. I want to step up, uh, I want to stop after every step um, and then tell it when to continue. Then in the second step, I want it to check the spelling, grammar and formatting and propose some potential uh, improvements here. Um, and then in the third step, uh, this is a special one. On our website, we have a couple of sections where we list uh, related blog posts uh, that are related to a certain topic. Um, and I want uh, the agent to check all these sections, whether the new blog post um, should be listed on, on any of these sections. And for this, for example, it needs to understand the content. And finally, I wanted to build and check the website so everything is correct. Okay, so this is the, the basic workflow. Now, um, you might wonder, how is the agent supposed to do that? Because so it must access the, the workspace somehow, right? Um, and currently, it, it won't be able to do that, right? And I don't want to copy and paste everything to the chat here. Um, I want it to automatically interact with my workspace. And to enable that, I need to add some uh, tool functions to uh, my agent. And these tool functions allow then the underlying LLM to interact with my workspace. Um, now, I could look at the documentation and browse all the available tool functions in Thea AI. I could also use MCP. Um, but I want to do something much more simple. Um, and, I, and that means I want to look at an existing agent that does something similar. And for that, I will look at the coder agent. The coder agent um, is capable of writing code and it, it's capable of retrieving context, uh, context from the workspace. So it has all these functions that I probably need. And to get the functions, I basically select the coder agent here um, and look at its prompt. You can see it here. And let me just copy that over. So there is a section context retrieval, proposed changes, and so on. So that all looks good. And just copy that over. And um, in the first version, let me just paste that here and then review that a bit. So first section context retrieval allows to look at the workspace, retrieve the content of file, which is great. Search in workspace, great, sounds good. Um, file validation also looks good. Then we have proposed code changes. Um, my agent doesn't write code, so maybe I change this to file changes to not confuse the agent too much. And then there's a section that describes how um, the agent is supposed to uh, write changes back to files. That looks good. Um, then we have a section about tasks, so the agent can execute tasks, which my agent needs to execute the website build, so that is cool. Um, and then it provides some additional variables that are kind of standard that will, I, will, I will not go into detail uh, for now. All right, and with that, let me actually close all this and now let me test my agent. Um, so let's open this file here. So this file is um, a prepared blog post. So I've written that in Google Doc and downloaded it as a Markdown file, and I want this to be um, converted. So let's do that. Um, so I write blocker, convert, um, and then I use the variable to reference the currently open file. I could, could, of course, also use drag and drop or any other mechanism to point it to this file. Let's do this. this if it works, it might take a while. So let's see what it does. So I will help you to convert uh, the release notes, great. Now we can observe what it does, as always in Thea AI. So it looks at the file, that is great. It looks at an example post that I've provided, that's also great. Now, super, uh, it checked the image directory, whether all the <clears throat> images are actually there. Um, as it seems, all images were there, actually. So that's cool. And now it starts to, to um, create the blog post. Now, while it is doing that, I want to do one more thing um, that um, fills this break a bit. So currently, um, the um, prompt customization that I did, um, and that was this prompt here. Um, so currently, this is located, as we can see, um, again, in my user home, right? So if I, um, uh, this is only available to me at the moment. And, and this is actually not what I want because I want other people to work with the same prompt. Um, and to fix that, I can very easily just go to this location here that's in my user home 
and basically just drag this prompt template into uh, the dot prompts directory in my workspace. And then once I do the final commit um, to the custom agents file and the, the prompt customization, other people would have access to, um, to the same file. All right. So let's see how far it is. It's still writing. It's a pretty long blog post because, uh, as always, the Thea um, 162 release was full of news. Um, so let's see how long it still takes. Yeah, now it's done. Perfect. So let's look at that, um, how that looks like. Yeah. Got the metadata pretty much correct. It got the date correct um, just um, by looking at the, the folder name. It created a nice uh, meta description. So this is fully AI generated and it summarized what's in the blog post. And here um, starts the manual content and just look at that. Yeah. So for example, it replaced here um, a Google doc link that was there before with the right a markdown link. Um, here we can see it got it correctly that links to our own website are uh, relative and not absolute. And for example, here there's an external link that it got correct. And here um, we can see um, it em embedded the images correctly. So all this information was not there, but it pretty much did a great job with that, as it seems. Cool. All right. Now um, let's go to the next step. Um, so let's apply this and create this file. Um, and let's see what it did. Set. Next step, please. Next step, which I think should be reviewing for spelling, grammar, and formatting improvement. Um, now, this will not take as long as the, the initial one because it doesn't have to rewrite the full um, file again, obviously, but it will just replace certain places where it has some, some improvements to do. So let's see. And let's look at this. We can, of course, review that, what it found. Yeah, there is a comma here that is weird. That looks good. Um, ah, and video is spelled. Yeah, all looks good. Okay, let's apply this. Um, and now <laughs> we can observe here, it, it didn't fully stick to my instructions because now it is already checking the relevant um, uh, blog post sections, whether this blog post should be added here. So it searches now on our website. And here, for example, we can see on our Eclipse Thea topic website, um, it identified, okay, it might make sense to add the new release and it correctly added this to the list of blog posts that are listed there. So which is, which is pretty cool. All right. I would like to close the demonstration here for now. I hope you found this interesting. Maybe you have your own ideas uh, of workflows that you can automate uh, by simply creating custom agents. Um, keep in mind, you can use this as a user of the Thea IDE, um, but with the underlying framework Thea AI, you can also use this as a tool builder um, where you actually prepare agents um, for your users so they don't have to manually deal with prompts. Um, and if you do so, you have, of course, uh, much more power and can uh, implement much more complex agents that, for example, interact with external system, with your tool data, with code, with databases, and via MCP, basically with any system out there. Um, if you want to build such a tool, keep in mind, uh, we are here to help. Eclipsos is your technology partner for building AI native tools and IDEs. So get in contact with us um, if you are interested in that and uh, let us discuss your use case. Finally, let me mention all the technologies that I've shown today are fully open source and freely available. Um, I will put some links in the description below with more documentation and download links so you can try that out yourself. Um, and with that, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and uh, consider to subscribe to our channel to not miss the next video.